All right, what's up, YouTube? I'm Forty here. We're going to be looking at some deck profiles today from the OCG. It's actually my favorite time of the week. Um, we actually get a chance to analyze what is going on over in Japan. Um, they are testing for the new format. It is week zero um, for their format. A lot of the locals have already adapted and have started allowing players to test for the current metagame. But anyway, uh, the first deck list we're going to be looking at today is another deck list from uh, the Princess Tournament series. In Japan, it is a all tournament series for females. Um, I really like analyzing these lists because they're they're not super competitive meta gamey um, to a degree, um, but we do get to see an aspect of a lot of what's going on in the minds of some of the uh, female duelists over in Japan. So this is blue eyes. It, it's pretty basic, but we'll talk about a few things here. So three blue eyes white dragon, three alternative, two dragon spirit of white, one ghost ash. Triple Maxi, man, Japan's so lucky. One Cat Sith, triple White Stone of Ancients, one White Stone of Legends, three Sage, and one Valor. Your spell lineup three Revival, one Feather Duster, triple Trade In, triple Card, or excuse me, two Cards Constants, triple Melody, one Soul Charge, one Monster Reborn, two Twin Twister, one Imperial Order, one Internal Nightmares, and of course, Solemn Strike. The extra deck here, looking at one. Number 23, one Tachyon, one Titanic, one Cypher, one Full Armor, one Dark Matter, uh, Pain Gainer, and of course Seven Sins. And then of course Moonlight, Michael, Crystal Wing, two Spirit Dragons, and two Azure Eyes. Now remember, this format is geared for one-on-one -on -one plays, so there is no side deck. Um, but this looks like it's pretty standard for your Blue Eyes deck. Um, of course, Monster Reborn, Feather Duster, um, you have the alternative drop turn one. Uh, this will make you a spirit dragon to continue your play um, essentially if you need to do it depending on the scenario actually no it won't uh, you got me melody's pretty good Mel actually uh, melody discard the alternative add um, a blue eyes and another alternative from your deck um, or you can go trade in try to fetch something before you do that play um, it's kind of up to your mindset there cards of consonants we'd have to dig um, a little bit further, but we might get there. And then, last but not least here, Eternal Nightmares, Valor, is a really good scenario. Unfortunately, just kind of a brick. And, ooh, Cards of Consonants with Ancients is always good. So, uh, that is the Princess Sprite uh, Blue Eyes deck. So, next up, actually, there's, there's some more fun stuff here. So, um, last week we actually took a look at... Uh, Dinosaur True Kings. Um, I was kind of wondering if they were going to continue uh, to see a lot of play, and it looks like um, Japan went ahead and adapted to the current metagame uh, for, I, I guess, this build. This is going to probably be uh, the meta outside of the other deck, which we'll talk about here. So, you've got one Ultimate Conductor, uh, triple of the Agnes mod, uh, triple of the Lizioza mod, and then, of course, one Doggeron. Triple uh, Miscellaneous Asaurus, Triple Soul Devouring, One Tyranno Infinity, Triple Ghost Ash, Triple Baby Asaurus, Triple Petrodon, and Triple Maxi with One Drek Ilio. Uh, spells here, Three Fossil Dig, Three Terraforming, Triple Forbidden Chalice, and Triple Dagonic Diagram. Uh, extra deck, uh, Nyla Dweller, Castell, Dolka, Logia, Utopia, Dark Rebellion, Azathoth, Utopia of the Lightning, uh, Entra Bluffnir, uh, V of D, of course, Danglong, Shambara, Trishula, and Leo. Uh, side deck, Triple Skullmeister, One Feather Duster, Triple Twin Twisters, Triple DD Ground, Two Quaking, and Triple Eradicator. So, I know John's been testing this deck uh, a lot in the TCG uh, for the current format, and he's he's really said... I. He's really liked it a lot from what I've seen. Um, there might be a little variations to it. I don't know how hard he's going on uh, these guys on his build, and I believe he's only playing one Ultimate Conductor. Um, but any at any stage, if you resolve Dragonic Diagram and this deck, it is absolutely really good. So I actually don't know what we're doing here. I do believe that any hand that I resolve this with these is absolutely broken. I can destroy two other monsters uh, in your hand or face up on the field, including an earth monster, so I can just go both earth 
And then, of course, uh, Agnes Mud for fire, which will trigger Miscellaneous Thesaurus. Uh, definitely a lot of cool combos here. Um, Ghost Ash is also fire. Um, this particular build did co cut the Ghost Reaper, and not the Ghost Reaper, um, <clears throat> Ghost Ogre. From it last week, they were playing Ghost Ogre over Maxi, but Maxi adds another consistency layer to this deck because of uh, Litho over here. Uh, you'll have the ability to pop a dead max seed in your hand, turn one, and continue off with your plays. I definitely think that's important to bear that in mind. That that little consistency um, over Ghost Ogre, I mean, what is Ghost Ogre really giving you um, for this particular format? I don't think there's really anything too particularly um, interesting that would trigger over here. Um, these guys don't have onboard effects. So yeah, Ghost Ogre is pretty awful. So, I don't know. I really, I like what they're going with um, in terms of the meta game approach to this. Uh, this deck is just one massive toolbox. Um, I would definitely be scared to play against this in the OCG, fearful of what this deck can do to me. Um, last but not least, uh, this was a deck from a local tournament. Um, unfortunately, it does not have a side deck posted with it, nor an extra deck, um, but we will attempt to showcase a little bit that is we're going here. So, this is uh, Cosmo little of this guy. So, Cosmo True King, essentially. So, one driver, triple gamma, one tin can, one straw man, triple maxi, one sword troopers, one farm girl, triple slip rider, one dark lady, one land walker, triple dark destroyer, Two Masterpiece, Triple Gold Driver, Triple Vol Flame, One Bisma Gear, Triple Terraforming, One Metal Host Fusion, One Teleport, One Full Metal Host Fusion, Triple Festival Spinning, this card's absolutely amazing, One True Draco Succession, Triple Cosmo Town, uh, Triple Dragonic Diagram, and of course, Triple Metal Host Combination. Now that is 47 cards. Um, first thing we need to point out here. Um, like I said, there is no extra deck. We'll, we'll talk about the deck here in a second. Um, obviously, you're going to be playing pretty much a good combination of the Metal Foes monsters. Uh, most of your main deck monsters are going to be on the board. Um, being able to resolve this into Mithrilium, uh, this into um, some of the other uh, good things. I don't know if you'd be considering Ori Hulk um, in this build. You may as well assume you have room. Ori Hulk, of course, Alkahest, and Mithrilium are going to be probably your main resolvable targets. And this, uh, the retarded thing here is actually Festival Spinning. Uh, this is a quick play that lets you set two <laughs> field spells with different names directly from your deck onto the field, one of each side. And then when either of those card, um, while either of those cards remain face down on the field, neither player can activate or set other field spells. Um, okay, so you give your opponent your Cosmo Town. You take the Dragonic Diagram and essentially proceed to just set up and do your combos all day. Um, you can also give yourself the Cosmo Town if you need to do the immediate setup play. Um, you also have the ability to pop off and do as you need to um, with your Metal Foes. Also being able to resolve uh, True Draco um, because um, I believe that you can resolve this um, with Pendulums uh, because it does say... Um, continuous spell cards so I believe these are counting as I don't don't quote me on that um, just a cute little play also you have infinite slip riders also we're probably gonna be seeing a, a little bit bigger of a return of the hand trap versions um, of the side frames I definitely think the game is gonna see a lot more play um, because being able to negate a key spell on the opponent's turn not letting your opponent resolve festival spending also seems really good um, only letting them have four cards while you're capitalizing on a pretty big boss monster uh, to assume that you're going to have some sort of combo to set up. Also, Masterpiece and a Dark Destroyer on the board makes me want to fucking cringe. Uh, definitely how devastating that looking at this current metagame is going to be. So this is the opposite side of the equation. Um, I mean, if you're playing, <laughs> if you're playing against this all day and you're playing create the other big board dot deck you're going to be in a very good position here because who, who doesn't love a fucking dark destroyer with 3000 that can't be targeted i didn't it, uh, i don't know uh, the last thing i want to point out this week is nobody's playing links nobody the first three monsters that came out are pretty awful 
Um, and the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! just decided to immediately adapt to not have to deal with it. So just it's very interesting to take note of that. So guys, what do you think about this week in Japan? Uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And I'm out. Peace. Until next week, guys. That's not all, folks. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Please check out my Cardfight Vanguard channel, VanCole40. You guys will get an insight in our playtesting sessions. And please check out the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. That way you guys can follow the House of Champions and M. Cole 40 Interactions. Please check out M. Cole Games for all of your guys' trading card game needs. And if you guys enjoyed this content, please check out my Patreon in the description. Every bit helps to the creation of these videos. One step at a time and improvement, and that's the goal of this channel. Alright guys, have a good time, and thanks for watching.